Hi, friends. I do believe that Natasha Denona's Metropolis is her best palette out of all the palettes she has released. That is a huge statement, so allow me to make my case through a few demos, me swatching, and just gushing over Metropolis. What an opportunity. I also wanted to bring up two comments that were posted on my Natasha Denona top five midi palette video. The first comment being that Metropolis is actually a midi because although this is 28 and not 15 shadows, the pan size is the same, which would still categorize this palette as a midi despite the difference in size. That I agree with 100%. I thought to not include it in that category still because the whole intention behind the palette was different in that she wanted to celebrate her original 228 Pam palette during Sephora, which I think was an event held in 2019. It was the fact that she had released midis, but wanted to also recreate the experience of her 28 Pam palettes that definitely just changed the landscape of eyeshadow and really brought Natasha Denona to the forefront in the beauty industry. Then she wanted to release something with the smaller pan size. And Metropolis for me, the inspiration behind it just hits with the industrial era, the, I think she had described just like that great Gatsby vibe. And in my original Metropolis video, I had posted a vision board that I put together that I thought aligned with the shades found in Metropolis. And that made me adore the eyeshadow palette even more. So today I wanted to then dive back in, especially if you have this palette and you haven't been using it, we gotta use her. She's important. The second comment, which probably would be taken as a hater one, but I actually didn't, uh, for the following reasons. Let me read it first. No offense, but, and I mentioned that anytime you start a statement with but, just invalidates whatever you said before. So anyway, no offense, but if anyone was watching this for Rex, they wouldn't buy any. I don't know if it's your vid quality or personal aesthetics, but the looks were all kind of dull to me. I feel like your words didn't match the visuals at all. Fair point, perhaps that day the lighting wasn't great. And I remember when filming that video, the light changed significantly. I had to heavily rely on my glam core, which is not ideal. And maybe my hairstyle didn't match or she didn't like my hairstyle. The truth of the matter is, is, is that I'm not the best uh, artist on this space. If you want to see show-stopping, just impeccable looks, someone like Patty Alonzo comes to mind immediately. I mean, when it comes to her eyeshadow technique and looks, it's unparalleled. And I'm no Patty Alonzo. That's why I love to visit her from time to time. And I also think that perhaps as to the diversity of what we have available on the YouTube space for you to watch as well. Secondly, when I wanted to film that video, I didn't want to just speak about the palettes. I wanted to do as I explained to add context as as to why I chose these top five because for some reason many people are just interested to know what my five or my ranking is and again to make it more interesting I wanted to put my explanation into action so perhaps yes my looks weren't that great that day uh, again I'm not a makeup artist nor am I very good sometimes sometimes I'm just off I'm just off. So maybe that was an off day for me. So to clarify further, when going into the Metropolis video and when creating looks, again, is to add context to my explanation as to why I think but who am I? Why I feel Metropolis is Natasha's best palette. So again, I like to do as I say, and maybe this time I'll do a better job and my looks won't appear so dull. Here's crossing fingers, but wanted to put that out there for any future uh, eyeshadow ranking or top five, top three videos I decide to do going forward. I don't know how many looks I'll create for this video. I'm just gonna go with the flow and first just break down how I would approach Metropolis and the different ways you can combine the shadows or maybe not. Perhaps we'll take on a more simplistic approach to Metropolis so it won't feel as overwhelming. Now with all that clarification out the way, it's time for you to come in a little closer. 
that's enough for today's cheek selection i chose to use natasha denona's a uh, tan bronze anglo palette which remains one of my most favorite face palettes out of all the ones that she has released i have not bought her new highlighter yet i think it's like a pixie something it looks beautiful in pan but when i saw monica bell makeup swatch of it it just kind of looked limey gold which is beautiful as well but i feel she has something similar hold on in her old diamond blush and glow palette this color here i believe this is a cream but that whole like lime sheen type of a gig maybe not the same formula that's found in the new highlighter but much like what i had explained in my charlotte tilbury highlighter video i didn't feel compelled to buy it despite the fact that it's still in my radar because promo picks do wonders <laughs> on seducing me to buy makeup as i'm sure they do to you but i went back into my collection used tan bronze and glow pretty much applied all the products here i applied the cream first then i went in with the bronze which remains one of my most favorite bronzer shades out of all the ones I own because it's toastier in nature and I could bring it lower so it could appear more like a blush moment. Then I went over everything with super glow and high points of the cheekbones. I went in with the glow impact powder and just adore the results. So wanted to show a few clips of that again because if you're like reaching for something new or wanting to buy something new and you haven't used tan bronze glow in a while, it's a good one. I do have Linda's primer on the lids, but I found Danessa's primer. This is the Invisible Eyeshadow Base, which is similar in terms of feel, but maybe this is a little dried out. Not entirely sure. However, I think easier to apply than the tube. So I'm going to have this on standby for reapplication. All right. If you have not encountered a Natasha Denona palette before, she designs her palettes as a matrix, meaning no matter what row or column you encounter, quad, trio, uh, quintet, is that the word? Quintet? You run into, it's a look. So she managed to arrange the shades and textures in a way that basically whatever direction you decide to go with your application, you'll have a look, which means if you just stuck to this column here, it's going to include all these colors, but they'll work well with each other. Or if you start here and go this way, even these three here, you'll create a look. And something I mentioned in my close friends membership video where I mashed together Natasha Denona's pastel palette and Pat's Divine Droid is that the more I use Natasha palettes, I realize the reason she includes different textures with different types of intensities in one space because that allows you to create nuanced gradients on the eye for those transitions to appear lightweight and watercolor like in nature versus heavy on the lid and why she has a many cream to powders here which some had critiqued as redundant I get it because at first glance they look very similar but when you swatch them and pair them together with the other shades in here this is more like a, a warm blue which matches with that metallic this more of like a a teal like a green blue and this is more like a turquoise right so you have those corresponding shades present again in order to create that nuanced gradient on your lid and also to just add more dimension to the look if you truly wanted to create like that impactful eye but we could also take on a more again simplistic approach where you can just use two shades for instance if you wanted to go warm one day you apply this cream to powder matte with this more like rosy copper shade or you could keep it just simple brown or you could just keep it here you needed something to blend out the metallic shade then you can use this cream to powder to blend out that metallic you could use the avocado shade and then place that gold on the center of the lid i'm going to start with this column here i think this is a beautiful setup so we have a more traditional a uh, powder matte that leans very orange yellow it's like a muted orange and i would say overall uh the palette leans warm because even the powder mattes, I feel, have a, a yellow tone to them that influences the rest of the palette. And you see here, I think that more muted kind of 
yellow orange hue you can see better on the lid and I'm placing that through the crease now there are different approaches you can take when applying Natasha shadows a lot of people like to start with a mat first it kind of anchors the look and maybe gives you a little more confidence to blend out other shades you choose to pair with it also if you wanted to keep it super simple just hit that through the crease go in maybe with this antique gold shade or maybe more with the olive if you wanted what I like to do is place this cream to powder why do I insist on having this so far away? I think I want to try this Refer 32. It's a flat top eyeshadow brush, but the surface area, I think, will pick up a little more of this cream to powder shade. And I'll strike it inwards so that the majority of the shadow will stay on the lower part of my outer lid. And then I can deposit a little more and increase the intensity of the color without necessarily bringing it up too high. And an advantage that you have with using a cream to powder this shade is that it is lighter in nature in terms of the blend. Natasha purposefully, I feel, formulated these shades in this texture so you have a little more control over the blend because of the moussier consistency they flow over the skin easier than a powder matte would. And especially if it's in this color, it could pose a lot of impact at once, which will probably maybe not discourage you from using it, but she wanted you to, you know, experiment with the possibilities. And these all have names, by the way, Royal, excuse me, taking Royal now, but cutting it down just on the outer fourth here, yeah? So we can create that really nice forest green bracket. And I think nice when paired with the more orangey yellow shade. So now we can go in either with the more sparkly metallic. I think you can tell that this is more of a burnished finish versus more of a reflective one. Let's go in with the more burnished and that is shield. So that has more of an antique gold uh, application. And I'm using my finger to first tap that over the lid, taking a shader brush, as I like to do, to refine the edges here. So I'm tapping in and around and over a little bit of Royal so it can have a, a nice gradient there. Now with Penny, that coppery shade, I am placing that on the lower inner part because that will be kind of like the spotlight moment and you see how much more shine it has compared to Shield. So this is Shield. You see that's a little more burnished. This is Penny. It's gonna have a little more texture to it, but because of the bigger flakes present in the formula, that will naturally have more reflectivity when light shines on. And to control that application a little bit more, I'm taking my Refer 3 thinner brush so that it stays more or less on the inner part of my eye. Taking Royal again over so those shades can combine. Yes. Inner corner, we'll have to kind of dip out a little bit. We can go in with, is this Buido? I can't read backwards. <laughs> we could take Orium. That would be nice on the inner corner or go over to like a lighter beige shade. But Orium is pretty. It has really nice shine. It's a dual chrome shade. And I think when paired with what we got going on here, especially when you add Royal, I think nice. Again, in with my Refer 3, Orium, tapping that on the inner part of the eye, taking it a little higher through this arc. Yeah, so it can combine nicely with Shield. <laughs> That's pretty, you can definitely see that reflectivity but beware because of the texture present in this formula you might experience a little bit of fallout and no problem at all have a smaller dense brush on standby so you can just kick off whatever fell you could keep it here or you can add liner or whatnot we will add lashes once we complete the second eye so since we did that column 
maybe we can do something ooh this is always a classic way to go with the orange tones and the blue tones I do want to go this way I think I want to well because we already used that so many choices that's why I love Metropolis so much how about this this little square here we got this teal blue metallic and it's like where do we go from there I think you can use the blue metallic on the lid if you want it to fully commit to that shade or reserve it for the inner lower lash line which is fine to do. I think we should have a little fun and place it all over the lid. But first, let's go in with Azoic, which is this cream to powder, like taupey olive shade. Yeah, I think it leans a little warm, but I'm going in with my Sonia G Fusion Blender to pick up enough of that texture so I can set up that metallic teal shade. And this is a great color. It shows up more warm on camera, but one of the more neutral leaning shades in here. And I just adore the more gritty, grungier tone of Metropolis over her other palettes. I think a lot of people's ultimate favorite from Natasha is Biba. And without a doubt, I mean, that is a neutral lover's dream especially with the mustards in there. Like you can't go wrong with that palette. But Metropolis for me holds so much magic in terms of the different textures and shades in here. Like you can do anything with this color story and that's what I love it. Azoic is pretty. It's like an olivey type of a taupe and I think lovely on its own. If I just wanted to go super simple, maybe a little black coffee on the lash line. And if I want to go a little more glam, slap on some lash, but this by itself is outstanding. As promised, going in now with Jubilee. This is our, I guess you would categorize this as turquoise? Turquoise or teal? I'm not very good with categorizing shades, fam. Let me know down below. But that's lovely. And as I like to do, go in with my finger first to get the majority of the metallic on the lid and then I'll go in with my shader brush this is again refer 28 to further refine that application carving it in and under Azoic. And I think I would like to wet my brush because with textured metallics like these I think they benefit from a little more uh, moisture <laughs> moisture, so that there's just better adherence, which is probably what I should have done with some shadows from my uh, top five video because sometimes when you layer these metallics over the cream to powder, that moussier texture from cream to powder, it has slip, which is the point, so it's easier to blend. But then when you add a metallic on top, it might look dull because it's so slippy that there's no moisture there, right, to latch onto, which could dull the finish of the metallic. But now that we added a little bit of setting spray, we mitigated that risk. So I think that looks much better. Sometimes you just gotta do practice and learn from your mistakes, fam. That is the... Philosophy of life, pulling through the edges to get a little more hazy haze. Now we're not done because we got two more colors here. We have the more, well, compared to Penny, I'm happy we still have Penny on the, on the arm. So this is Pen, no, this is Penny. This is the other one. So that's more, I guess, gold. That's more copper. And here is like the, is bronzier than, I guess, this more olive. I guess it's more bronzy neutral, and this is more bronzy taupe. I could be making that up. <laughs> I don't quite know, but you know what? We're just going to go forward with that. In terms of where to place this, however, maybe this could be our prominent lower lash line shade, and I'll use a slightly bigger brush. This is my Refer 26. I adore this brush because it's pencil shaped, but it has really nice flexibility, which allows great application here on the lower lash line because it just sweeps that color back and forth easily, 
without any pulling or tugging. I could also place a little bit on the outer corner, but you know, it's not necessary. And now we can go in with the more gold metallic shade that again takes on a similar texture to Penny from this eye, but to ensure we get that adherence, spritzing it again, and then tapping that on the inner part of the eye. I was gonna say lash line, not accurate. And once you get the color on there, I think it helpful to go back into the original lid color and then tap on the border so that it could look appear more seamless in terms of that transition. I think an important step to take so the final look does not appear disjointed, that there is a flow and movement on the actual eye. You could spend a little time just making, you know, those changes, those adjustments. Again, sweeping, sweeping, sweeping to catch any falling, falling. That looks nice. I like what's happening. I like how we place that olivey, taupey shade. I do want to place a little bit of Jubilee here on the outer because I do feel that just ties the look together. I could also just place it over. So the taupier bronze shade adds as like a neutral backdrop and that, ooh, that creates even more smoke. So that's pretty. I like what we did there. Don't have to do that step, by the way. Yes, you know, a suggestion. All right, it's time to apply some lashes and I'll be right back. I got so distracted with taking the B-roll shots of the final look that I took it off before I filmed speaking about the final look. I'm so sorry. But as you see in the final looks, we were able to achieve them quite easily and without having to think too much about combining colors. Again, I think Natasha does the thinking on our behalf in that you don't have to mull over which shade to go with that whatever you encounter it just opens the possibility for experimentation and then maybe finding out that two colors you wouldn't have thought to cocktail together before ended up working out fine and the textures again these moosier lighter textures easier to uh, blend the edges of the other hardier metallics although i would say it easier to apply the cream to powder formula first and then wet your metallic because as i had discussed during the demo that slip texture might not be ideal for a metallic to latch onto perhaps a little better for the more burnished metallic formulas in the palette because they have a little more I would say emolliency but maybe that wouldn't make much sense because the more emollient it is it won't stick as well either but all that to say I found that with the the metallics that have more reflectivity and flake in them would benefit from applying them wet. So I will take that step going forward when we go into the second demo. And I'm just looking because, ooh, I don't know, we can go so many ways for this next round. But stay tuned. I will apply Danessa's Color Fix Primer now on the lid. And hopefully that first demo was helpful and contributed to the argument why I think Metropolis is the absolute the best. Let's get into it. Now, I think in a previous video, I did a look using this column, which is classic. You can't go wrong with like the, the reds and the more copper leaning tones, especially with this super warm orange matte. I just want to pick something like how in the world would we be able to pull that off? And I'm looking at this square here because you got the forest green cream to powder, but then you got this burgundy or is it garnet let me know down below this red metallic how hmm you know what i think i know what i gotta do i'm gonna go in with this first and then go in with this color and then maybe this on the bottom but maybe that first you know what we don't know until we get to it and for this i'm definitely using my blender again my fusion blender and we're gonna swirl and twirl all right we're gonna get a lot on this brush oh excuse me i need to put on my color fix Hello. taking pat's concealer brush and just scooping out what i need and i find this just much easier especially when filming 
multi looks instead of having to push out primer from Linda's tube each time is a lot easier. All right, royal all over. We're getting in there. We're swishing it through. Now, the typical route I think would have been to just omit this shade altogether and stick to the garnet or burgundy with the yellow mustardy matte and that oh, what is that color even like that bronze copper metallic but you know i just want to see where this can go because this might be a lot of fun with what we're about to create i'm going to cut under that application a little bit using concealer i might not have to do this now but just in case taking a stiff brush here and just sweeping upwards to camouflage yeah because i'm not sure what will happen i'm not sure what i want to do here on the lower lash line but just in case taking a little more and just following that lane yeah because i that helps me kind of guide my blend on this side it i always blend too low but if i have like a road to follow so to speak I'm more likely to not do that. Now it was either this metallic or the more red to be placed all over the lid. That's going to look real Christmas-like. Or do I want to do this yellow matte now on the lid? That could be something. Wow, am I really going to do this? I think I I kind of do. I I'm gonna go for it. We are taking, we are taking this brush again, but I'm carving a little bit here on the lid because I want more of a blanked out space for this mat. Now we're doing the reverse of what we had on the first eye. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Taking now, that yellow matte and tapping on the lid and applying concealer is just gonna help intensify that application so it has a little bit more body when you apply it there that's pretty I like that I like that a lot maybe with the copper shade I'm tapping on the outer part and then over where we applied that metallic I don't feel the need to wet the brush because there, I think, is enough adherence from this texture at least to get what I need from this application. I'm bringing it over, yeah, so it could be more gold. All right, all right, all right. And now, lower lash line, definitely with this shade. I think that, well, we'll see. I'm predicting it will be an okay move, but... We don't know until we get there. Let's sweep the red. This is very holiday. Careful to not have it travel too low. Gonna bring it up a little bit. And I think maybe with a fluffier blender, because I do want to refine the edges a little bit ooh, of Royal. So I'm taking my refer number one which is a fluffy shader. But since it's flat on both sides, I feel I can get a better blend here just so it's a little more precise. All right, it's not too bad. Again, you don't have to do this. I just like to see what the possibilities are, right? So it's going to appear more contrasting because you have the yellow with the green. But if you wanted, I'm taking now this shade here that we tapped on the outer lid and bringing it higher. So if you wanted to offset Royal a little bit, you can now change it where you could bring that more bronzy copper shade higher. And I know that's like a, not a huge no, but a move one would typically won't make because it's shiny. Hmm. <laughs> it's okay. I'm happy we did this, but I'm actually going to take this off. 
because now I want to go another route. I think it would have been better to... Hold on, stand by. We are starting from the beginning. I wanted to do that on purpose to just show you sometimes my ideas are bad ones and you have to start over. So I'm going back in with this color first actually because this is a softer metallic and I do enjoy this texture in just relying on its smoothness for one and done look. So from the most simplistic approach with the ones that don't have as many flakes in the formula, you can just use them standalone and blend them through the crease, right? Without the presence of a matte, I think that's a great way to go. And what happened with the green is, well, one, we, we could have just left the green out and kept it all warm. But if you wanted to try and incorporate it in some way, then perhaps we can just place it lower in her lash line because sometimes you know if the color is too strong when paired with others it could look too contrasting although if i was a better uh makeup artist maybe i could have pulled it off but you know sometimes sometimes you just gotta admit defeat and that's what I did. And I'm doing this again here, even with the metallic, because I need my lane. I need I need that landing strip. Okay, now we'll add the more red on the majority of the lid and overlapping it with the more coppery. So isn't that lovely? You just have that more red gradient here happening. But then we can also apply the more orange again on the inner part of the eye or you know just kind of like zip on over and apply this one instead because I think this is a touch bit lighter just to have that highlighting property you know so you could actually see highlight and I think this actually has like a pink flip in the color which is very pretty. If you wanted, we can lightly fluff through the yellowy mustard shade, just very lightly here on the edges of the metallic, you know, to add a little bit of blurring and finishing. Not required, but if you wanted to take on that step, please, by all means. Metallic red here on the lower lash line. Now this is where we can add the green if we wanted here but don't know if i want to do that i think i'm going to stick to just what we have here because although i had explained at the beginning where you could go either way sometimes it's okay to not include certain colors if you feel it's going to sabotage your look now maybe in a more avant-garde setting could i have added it like on the inner part of the eye like i'm sure there is a place for this green somewhere in here I, I, I think I'm just not seeing it right now, which is fine. Maybe I'll dream about it later. <laughs> and then it will just come to me in my mind and I will wake up and write it down so I can remember to record it. But I think this is pretty for now, right? I th think we established a, a solid look with the warmer shades. Nothing wrong with just keeping it simple and placing the mat here underneath because I want a little more haze to add just more body to the look. Next up, what are we gonna do on this side? I wanna do this column because the avo green, which it's called lethal. I mean, this is like the best, the absolute best. So I am fully confident now with what we're about to achieve is going to work. Taking Fusion Blender with lethal and I'm cutting that right into the crease. Avo green that has a pretty strong like yellowish undertone. I think this is the perfect setup shade for all of the deeper like midnight teal turquoise cream to powders in here. I mean, no matter which one you pair this with is gonna turn out like just beautifully gradient because I think all those shades are just similar you know, in the green, blue, anytime you combine green, blue, anything is gonna be fine. And again, since we're sticking with this column, going in with this blue, and I'll use what I did on the first demo, my flat top, but I think I'm gonna do like a, 
a bracket. So we're gonna go halo, getting us much of that, I guess is teal. Would you categorize this color as teal? Onto the lid as possible. And then I'll go in with my fusion blender again to pull those colors through the crease so they can combine with lethal. The reason why I'm saying the color names for some and not others is because because every time I flip the plastic, it messes with my audio. And I have it flipped back so I could just tap into the palette without having to hold it. So forgive the inconsistency in me mentioning eyeshadow names and me just making them up because it's for that reason. Pulling the teal here on the outer as well as inner, why not? Well, don't do that. It's going to spread out much too far. So let me pull that in with my refer three. Now with the gold and just to ensure that it does stick well over what we created here. Take my Mac Fitz Plus. Got that gold antique hue on the brush. And now let's tap. Oh yes, there it is. I think this just pairs beautifully with the teal and the avo shade. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just so pretty. But I'm going back in with this cream to powder that was already on the lid and tapping on the edges, right? Because that's going to ensure the application of the gold doesn't appear so abrupt, right? It's just like, bam, where did that come from? It'll have a little more fluidity there. And I also want to place a touch more of the avo here on the very higher points of the blend, closer to the brow bone because something that Natasha loves to do is build gradient and create that, that movement on the eyes where you can't detect where one color ends or it begins. And I think that's just from using and layering as many as you can. Now with the gold shade on the center of the lower lash line and having it drop a little on purpose and going in now with the cream to powder again, but pulling it further in. Yeah, cause that looked a little, appeared a little short. I'm doing the same thing here on the outer part of the lower lash line. There we go. And now Orium, what we use on the first eye here on the inner corner, I wanna wet this cause we want it to shine. That's going to be beautiful here. Now to top everything off. Yeah, it has like that lime green duochrome flip and it just looks and appears more metal in finish. Beware that you don't pick up so much because naturally when you spray a shade, it will spread out far more than if you applied it dry. So know that maybe if you are spraying a color like this, you don't pick up as much so you could keep it tighter to the area that you're applying it on, but not to worry. This is where concealer fixing comes in, where you can just kind of carve around where you need less shadow. You don't need a lot of concealer, right? It's just enough to erase. There we go. And I'm pulling in and around, just being very careful with this adjustment, taking the same brush, making sure I'm wiping in between so there's no odd layering. I'm taking more of that cream to powder, right? So that it doesn't look weird and just blocked out. There we go. Beautiful. I had the same lipstick combination on from last look, which is the proper beauty Venice and Pat's structure. Is this structure? No, Supernatural, I'm a liar. Would I, should I just keep this lip on? I think it's working fine. I'm gonna keep it on, I'm gonna put on some lashes and I'll be right back. Demo number two with a few adjustments. As you saw, I redid the first look, just committing to the copper red story, but went green and antique gold on the other. Same lashes on, by the way, these are the Ardell Naked Lashes in 421. By far one of the easiest lashes to apply and I just think overall they add to the look without being too crazy. So they're like a realistic lash for me, which is why I 
they're my pick. Proper Beauty again with finesse, Supernatural for liner, pretty much just kept tan bronze and glow on the face because I just think it's neutral enough to match up with the various looks we've created thus far. So even though you might mess up with Metropolis, you might run into a few roadblocks, but it's all good. I think that encourages experimentation and discovering what works and what doesn't work. Despite that, if you just stick to Lethal and combine it with any of the teals in here, you'd be good to go. Or you could just keep it all garnet, copper, bronze, like, pinky bronze e as well i think for the final demo which i have to who we gotta hurry up because we gotta call at 12. i want to then present one of my most favorite go-to looks from metropolis it's this column here i know super basic b but you just can't go wrong with it and then maybe end with the bang from this column here we can zero in on this quad with the blues why not so with that said let's start from scratch I'll be back here in a minute. Perhaps my most favorite color out of the entire palette is a cream to powder, but not too warm, not too neutral. It's like a, it's one of those shades. Can't get enough. I can use a fluffier brush with this color because it's not as, you know, in your face like the previous one. So where? So many brushes. Grabbing my Pro Blender, Blender Pro, taking that through the crease, and again, one shade that I would rely on if I do want the overall look to appear warmer. Yeah, maybe again, black coffee on the lash line for added definition. And then of course, taking the darker cream to powder. So that's going to provide a little bit more smoke. And for this I think I wanna go in with one of my workers. Yes, worker one. Just have a more robust serving. Yeah, so I could create a little more smoke here. And I can just go in with the deeper shade here all over my lid and through the crease and just have a definitely a all matte one and done moment. But because this is cream to powder, it's gonna have a really nice sheen on the skin, which I think a lovely route to go if you wanted to change it up. And then pulling that down the lower lash line not all the way just yet i do want to just urge get over apply a little bit of this matte just to the edges of this cream to powder again a little more fluffing but you don't have to per se you can just stick to that cream to powder maybe maybe if i were to make an adjustment in this palette Yes, you could have taken out one of the cream to powder teals in here and put in a more like neutral, slightly cool leaning matte powder if you didn't necessarily want the looks to appear as warm. So instead of having these, one of these out, maybe like let's say you take that one out and add another powder matte that's even more neutral than this because you still have neutral moments here with like the olive taupey shades now with this like ooh, more neutral bronze shade so pretty this is a little smoother than the more reflective metallic formulas in here so i feel confident in just applying this over the lid it's not going to appear as shiny it's going to have more of like a, a burnished finish here on the lid you can wet it if you like you know but i'm just going to keep it as is and then taking you know your classic champagne shade that you can pretty much rely on for any inner corner moments no matter what shades you use from metropolis because that's just going to you know give you the highlight that you're looking for and let's pull a little bit of the darker brown cream to powder further across the lash line here really smoking it out and if you wanted you can take the more medium brown let's see here a slightly fluffier brush where is where is it so many brushes in front of me under the lower lash line to create just more haze because i just love that look the application creates you know just really committing to this look you don't have to do this but i have to go in with black coffee. I think an appropriate step to take if you're looking to add more intensity here 
to the overall look, which sometimes I like to do because adding a little bit of that dark brown it just adds, okay? Of course, in my refer three, going to pull that out a little bit. You don't have to do the wing either. You could just stop the liner right where the lash line ends because that's one way to go to create more intensity on the lash line, but I love to wing it out. I just like how it looks. Another route you can go to is just to apply your champagne shade all over the lid and then black coffee. I mean, please, that's that's a great way to create a very simple look, but some shape on the eyes. All right, as prom is going in with the square here. Now with the cream to powder formula first, Fusion Blender working that into the crease and the outer lid, right? Because if we're going to go midnight blue or... I guess no. What were that? Cerulean? Cerulean. Because this is going to set up that metallic. And note also when dealing with these cream to powders, you can apply more pressure here on the outer part of the lid, but then lighter pressure when you get closer to your brow bone, right? Because that's going to deposit less color, which you kind of want if you wish for the blend to appear more gradient-like. So it could have that just lighter shading near the brow and then kind of whisk it out here so it doesn't appear like just in your face. Now with this metallic blue, ooh, so shiny. I definitely, to ensure the shine, okay, would like to take this on a wet brush. So as we've been doing with my 28 spritz spritz, I'm gonna slide that, ooh, just all over my goodness it just looks so inky i love it let's tap to ensure that we get opacity that there are no spots left behind and then tapping in a little bit of the cream to powder here through the crease man oh man where can we put well this is what we can do since we're dealing with the square right or you don't have to use this brown. You could just stick to this trio here and use the champagne on the inner corner. But what I want to do is get in with the avo. You know it's going to go in with the avo. So you could do one of two things. You could use a brown shade to blend out the cream to powder blue. That's going to anchor it a little bit, present more earthiness to the look if you don't want to fully commit to this blue story we got going on. If you want to further amplify, however, like... This blue green, I'm tapping into lethal. Yeah, this color here. And then whipping it softly on the very outer edges of that first cream to powder. And that's going to just add more dimension to the look, as well as the inner corner. And then taking, let's see, I'm gonna take my refer here, that lighter pencil brush, because it just has great movement on the tip. So on those harder to reach areas of the eye, you're just a little more successful with blending with precision. Champagne shade on the inner corner, or you could go just totally different. I am dying to, you know what? Mm, what should I pick? You know what? I'm just gonna stick. I'm just gonna be very simple here. The champagne shade is fine. It's fine. pre to powder blue through the lower lash line, and then the metallic as well. We didn't use the brown. I think because I was just far too inspired by how this was turning out, I wanted to completely commit to the blue story. You don't have to do that, but listen, if you're gonna do it, you're gonna do it. Having my, my jumbo concealer on standby to lightly tap under the edges here, you know, just to clean it up a little bit. For the lower inner lash line, I think I'm just gonna bring down the champagne shade. Then here we go, pull it up. All right, 
that looks lovely gonna slap on some lashes and I'll be right back final look is complete and I adore the fact that we went super neutral brown on one eye and totally committed to the turquoise eye and I think this final demo solidified my love for Metropolis and why I think it's Natasha's best just again the sheer variety of shades and textures and yes I can understand that there might be redundant shades in here but that's what Natasha loves to do she wants to give the user an opportunity to create nuance on the eye beautiful transitions and that requires you know shades that are a little less gold or a little more copper in terms of again creating that dimension without just using an entirely different color but one that is similar because it can be like a color blocking moment definitely what I tried to achieve in the second demo and and failed miserably but with the inclusion of the powder mask and then cream to powder and the fact that yes you will have to wet the metallic to get that ultra shine finish on the lid I'm fine with doing that step nevertheless every time I dive into Metropolis I'm instantly reminded as to what a beautifully created palette this is and I'm so happy she did a midi this size and I am curious to know if she has another one in store for us in this format I would just go nuts and maybe maybe cooler cooler neutral in story I would die if she did Leela like a Leela inspired midi metropolis size <sighs> that will be just the ultimate for me because she could go cool grayish if she wanted because you got 28 shades you know what I mean the cool gray burgundy violet fuchsia oh that would be so wonderful or put the 28 pans the original big size ones into these sizes instead because although this is pretty big I think just more accessible in terms of packing and traveling with so that is my wish list for 2023 who knows what that would bring but i'm crossing fingers let me know what your ultimate favorite natasha denona palette is down below although i am making the case for metropolis that is just my opinion i would love to know your fave we'll see you down in the comments fam and until then that is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up or maybe consider subscribing to my channel and until then i will see you on here again with another review tutorial <laughs> natasha denona video take care and i'll see you again soon